I strike oil, that's what I'm going to get me, an automobile. Oh, you can't depend on them things. I'm going to get me a gal with yellow hair. Don't listen to him, honey. He's only a dirt monkey. Now, me, I'm a real sky hooker. <laughs> peanuts, popcorn, cigars, and cigarettes. And that ain't nothing. I heard of a fellow that made $78,000 in 10 minutes off a two-acre oil lease. Jim Gardner says even these railroad trains will be running on oil someday instead of coal. Nah. Did you hear about them Wright brothers that flew that aerial plane? Oh, I don't believe that. Tickets? Show your tickets. <laughs> Conductor, this is not a race. Why don't you put on more cars? We do. These oil workers keep filling them up. Don't blame the railroad. Blame Jim Gardner. That's the truth. You've all got a chance to get in on an oil boom that'll make the land rush look like little casino. Here, read this. Did you hear that, Ellie? Yes, Tom, but you know about wheat. You don't know nothing about oil. Well, what you have to know, except it's in the ground there waiting for you. Sign with Jim Garner today and start your pay now. Ten dollars a day and a chance to be a millionaire. Now, ain't that worth taking a chance on? I guess so, Tom. Just as you say. I'll raise you a month's pay. Which you ain't got. Which I'm getting a million more. You tell him, sport. If Jim Garner can do it, so can I. I could use some of Gardner's luck right now. I could use that cool million he's got in his bubba bank. I'd be satisfied with his private car. Well, help yourself. It's right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Gardner wanted to see me. You mean conference. <laughs> hey, conference over. Want to see me, Mr. Gardner? Why, yes, Joe. Have you got a telegraph office in Cleveland? Yes, sir, but we only stopped there about a minute. That won't give me time enough. I have a bunch of wires to get off. But we've got a schedule to make. Make it up later, if you're smart. All right, Mr. Gardner. Anything you say. Always get what you want, don't you, Jim? That's right. But you don't always want what you can get, do you? Look, honey, I'm very busy. You better run up ahead with your friend. All out to Clavin Station. All out. All out? Mm-hmm. All out. Leave. Walter, I'll miss my train. You can live this down. I don't want to live it down. I only want to live. Listen to her, the shameless hussy. Walter, you promised me you'd never speak to that woman again. Mother, that's not the charitable attitude. Faith, hope, and charity won't help her. I don't want any help. Just get out of my way. That's exactly how I feel. Pardon me, ladies. I'm sure I can make you understand. Here, Pop, I take these wires. Oh, hold your horses. James E. Gardner. Oh, yes, sir. Right away, Mr. Gardner. Who's the beautiful sinner? Why, that's Catherine Allen. She wrote this here book. Spicier than a pickled apple. She doesn't leave town. I'll circulate a petition. And we'll all sign it. Please, tell them you're sorry and that you'll never write another book. They'll forgive you. But I'm not sorry. And don't think you're pinning any scarlet letter on my repentant bosom. Wait. In spite of everything, I'll... I'll marry you. Walter, you do that for me? Yes. That woman will never call me mother. Oh, Walter! Very interesting. I better read this. Oh, Kathy. You brazen creature. You, you... Jezebel's the word. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Ames. I wouldn't marry your son if he were the last man on earth. Wild horses couldn't keep me in this town. Let him have it, sister. Now you're talking, give it to him. And don't you think you're running me out? I'm leaving of my own free will. I'm going where people know it's the 20th century, where there are broad minds and broad horizons. What? I'm going to stand on my own feet and be free. Not if you miss this train, honey. <laughs> free from all you ostriches. You always leave town like this? It's the first time I've ever been carried out. This is my pleasure. Well, I can take care of myself, thank you. 
You bet you can. Oh, Christmas! Allow me, if I'm not too old-fashioned. Thank you. Hiya, chicken! Where'd you come from? Jeez, and boys, you see, here comes Carrie Nation. <laughs> Must be at least one gentleman in this coach. Well, this is the 20th century when women stand on their own feet, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a seat, Harry. Let go of me! I you want it, Broad Horizon, oh, didn't you? And this broad lap. Oh, <laughs> oh you, thank you. Who's that? Jim Gardner. Come along. But this is private, isn't it? And very convenient. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Why don't you take off your hat? Oh, you have those new flat breakers. Mm-hmm. A woman dares. Oh, you know. Everything. Catherine Allen? <laughs> what shall I call her? Catherine? Katie? Kitten, that's it. Kitten? Sure. A baby wildcat. Well, who are you? Just a guy opening up some oil fields around Sepulpa. Are you James E. Gardner? That's right. You know, you owe a lot to me. What? From the look on that fellow's face after you kissed him, he wasn't going to let you go. And I don't blame him. What's that for? Why does a woman usually slap a man? Oh, you really are a wildcat. I'm not as wild as you seem to think, Mr. James E. Gardner. Oh, wait a minute. You know there are no seats up ahead. Besides, I didn't think you'd mind that kiss. I know I didn't. Get out of my way. I'm no Jezebel. I'm not even a good imitation of one. I'm a school teacher. A school teacher? <laughs> and if you don't stop laughing, I'll slap your face again. I'm sorry. I thought you knew something about life. How could I know anything about life? I've never lived except in books. I've never been anywhere except in books. All I've ever known is books, books, books. But didn't you write one? Yes, in self-defense. And now where are you going? Kansas City, so I can experience some of the things I've been writing about. So people can't say school teacher the way you just did. But of all places, why Kansas City? Because my Aunt Clara's there. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on back and give me a chance to square myself. You can't learn much about life from an Aunt Clara in Kansas City. Come to my town, Sepulpa. I'll show you more life there in five minutes than you'll see in Kansas City in ten years. You ought to go to school. Let someone else be the teacher for a change. Oh! Uh oh. Excuse me. Guess I should have not. What is this, a hold-up? Just for a seat, mister. What do you think you're doing? You can't flag down this train. I know it. Well, why'd you do it? A horse died under me, and I figured... You figured what? Figured I'd carried this saddle far enough. Now, look, honey. Oh, wait! There aren't any seats up ahead. He's walked miles. You can't let an ex-soldier stand. Oh, you noticed their pants. It's your duty as a citizen. Well, Mr. Gardner, does he stay or does he go? I think the young lady would feel happier if he stayed. Now, that's real patriotic of you, ma'am. Well, where are you going? You know, I was arguing that out with my horse just before he died. Whether I'd go back around some papa and punch cattle again or just wait till my money run out. Where do you want to go? Where are you going? Yes, where are you going? Kansas City. Kansas City. You know, you just violated rule number three. I did? Your rights, I shouldn't let you ride on this train. 
As long as Mr. Gardner will put up with you, I guess it'll be all right. Thanks. That's very generous of you. Somebody sure is, judging from this lunchbox. Anybody mind? No, go right ahead. You folks pick up right where you left off. It's one thing about these big hats. <laughs> if you really want to live, you mustn't be afraid to take a chance. You've got to learn to leap first and look afterward. That's what happened to my horse. Broke his neck. As you were saying... Don't be afraid to take a chance. You've got to play for high stakes. Before we struck oil in my town, it was a dust-covered prairie with a handful of farmers trying to squeeze a living out of the ground. When all the while there was a fortune, right under their feet. <laughs> You're going to have to excuse me, mister. It's this book. What's so funny? Listen to this. They kissed, and the sun and the moon and the stars reeled around them. Say, them two could have started quite a conflagration. An author is entitled to poetic license. Oh, nobody's entitled to run that hog wild. That's no way to treat good literature. You want to find out what the author meant, read from the beginning. All right. But I don't think it'll do much good. Julie stood at the crossroads. Julia! Yes, ma'am. Julia stood at the crossroads. Which way? One road led to John and dull security. The other to Roger Hale and exciting adventure. He's ruining it. Read to yourself, if you don't mind. Oh. A storm raging outside. Forbidding home. He took up a glass of water. <laughs> stand any more of this. I'll bet whoever wrote that book is some dried up old maid who'd run a mile if a man even looked at her. Is that your opinion? Yeah. You know, I once had the idea that she was warm, beautiful, and courageous. But I guess you're right. It stops upon the junction. Here we are, boss. Home. Oh. Well, they'll be switching my car off here. So if you folks are going on to Kansas City, better move on up ahead. Looks like we're at the crossroads. How did it go in your book? One road led to John and dull security, and the other to... Uh... Oh, the junction! That's right. Switching this caboose off here. Hey, Sorrel Top, they'll be switching this coach off. Yes, 
so much noise, I can hardly hear you. What? Come on. Aren't gonna get chapped just step into the next car. Only hired girls put on their gloves in public. But they're cutting off the coach. I'm ready now. Take your time. Oh, good heavens, I missed my train. I never saw a better job of missing one. Me? My throat's raw from warning you. Well, that's very strange. I'm not deaf. Lady, I... I... I should have warned you. You most certainly should have. I'm not a mind reader, you know. Why, there's Mr. Gordon. Well, now, ain't that unusual? Hey, why don't you get a horse? Just... Oh, hurry, Mr. Gardner. That gusher ain't gonna wait for nobody. Hotel coach is fixing to pull out. Please don't bother about me. I can look out for myself. Well, I don't know. My granny always says that next to eating with a sharp knife, there's nothing so risky as a pretty girl trying to look out for herself. Your granny and I don't agree. <laughs> Mr. Gardner. Mr. Gardner. White kitten, what happened? The most terrible thing. I was hurrying off your private car when, when suddenly, without the slightest warning, the train pulled off and left me. That's wonderful. Get in here. I was hoping that would happen. What'll I do? Just don't worry. There'll be another train to Kansas City in a few days. And until then, you're going to school. And your teacher's going to be James E. Gardner, P.E. <laughs> P.E.? Uh-huh. Practical experience. <laughs> Twist her tail, Cherokee. Is it safe? Runs like a deer. <laughs> Noisy, snorting, gasoline monster. Oh, come on, you dead claim gasoline buggy. Take her easy, desperate. There ain't nobody gonna. Ben. Gentle summer, you young coyote. Hike yourself up here. What are you doing back in these stamping ground? Hi, uh, Desper. No. Oh, I ain't seen you since we turned that stagecoach over. Where you been keeping yourself? Well, Cuba and the Philippines. Say, uh, what's going on around here? You ain't gonna like it no more, Daniel. No? Cattle gone, sheep's come in. James E. Gardner struck oil. Get this thing to the blacksmith shop. Okay, boss. And the lady's luggage. My car. Take it to the hotel. I'm sorry, but if you folks are going into town, you better get another coach. Now, just a minute. What's the idea, Mr. Gardner? I'm using this one. Oh. Here, this will take care of all of you. I'm sure you don't mind. Come along, kitten. Thank you. Regular Lollapalooza. Yep, sure got all his buttons on. Desperate, straight to my oil field. And use the whip. Hi! Hi! What are you aiming to do around here, Daniel? Remember that wild pinto I was chasing for a couple of years? Yep, but you got him. Sorrel I'm after this time. Kitten, you're on your way to a thrill you'll never forget. I'm... I'm almost sure of that. I'll stake my life on it. Give me them ribbons. Yeah! Hey, 
It's part mine. What do you mean, yours? Everything I had went into starting this well. This was my land, my farm. You didn't lose it because you ran out of money. You lost it because you haven't got guts enough for the oil game. I'd have sucked it out before I let anyone take it away from me. Look, Mr. Gardner, I don't know what's legal and what ain't, but I'm going to get what's coming to me. I'm sick of hearing you cry. I gave you fellas jobs to help you out. Now collect your pay and get off my land. Your land, yeah, it's your land, all right, according to law. And nobody can take it away from you. Well, I can. Because if the way you got it's legal, so's this. Thanks, cowboy. What's the big idea? You really didn't want to catch that little fella, did you? I ought to break his neck. And yours, too. Now, just a minute. I got no steady side in this fight. When he had a gun and you didn't, that was taken unfair advantage. So what? So when you took out after him was 75 pounds, which he ain't got, that was taken a little advantage, too. You're asking for this. I'm gonna break your thick skull. Oh, please, Mr. Gardner. After all, he did save your life. All right, kitten, you can consider you saved his life. Now get out of town, cowboy, before I change my mind. Go on. Please go. I wish you'd make up your mind. A little while ago, you wanted me to stay, and now you want me to go. Oh, my. Things are happening so fast, it's like a, a two-ring circus. You've only seen the side show out here. You'll have to wait till we get in town for the main event. 
I hope you won't be too lonesome. I'm going to ride up front. I have some business to talk over with Desperate. Of course. Business comes first. We can talk later. What are you doing in here? Well, I was never one for walking. Besides, I owe you my life. What would you like to do with it? I'd like to give it right back to you. And some advice along with it. Open the door and jump out, even if you break a leg. Oh, don't worry about me, lady. As my granny always says... I'm not interested in your grandmother's old-fashioned ideas. Hey, she ain't so... You'd be surprised how modern she is. She's three jumps ahead of your favorite author. I'm willing to pay you, but just because you smoked a peace pipe with the old chief, you can't hold me up. And I'm grumbling you think I am, or you ain't as smart as I think you are. All right, desperate, you'll win. Arrange a power with Big Tree for tomorrow. Just a plain introduction? Uh, just how plain? Oh, howdy, a couple of bouquets. Uh, how much to tell him what a great guy I am? That'll cost you money. Well, I'm going to stretch the truth. I got to get paid for it. You know, I got a very delicate conscience. <laughs> Desperate, you're a burglar. I'll add 200 to it and make it an even thousand for a Class A introduction. Here for it. The lucky star to help make Sepulpa one of the biggest towns in the Southwest. Why, well, I'll be paying out more Suppose money. Suppose you stop paying me for the use of my coach, Mr. Lucky Gardener. Desperate. Are you working for me or for him? Say, what do you mean by letting my carriage trade walk? Now, Bessie, before you get all head up, let me explain. It's all my fault. I have with me a distinguished author, an author of what is destined to become a literary classic. A woman dares. More sounds excite. I'm sure you will be as impressed by the honor as I am. You? And when people of this caliber visit Sepulpa, it means we're growing up. I don't know what to say. I'm sure your granny could think of something apropos. This is where I get out. It is my great privilege to present our distinguished guest. Well, I thought I told you to get out of town. I couldn't get out till I got in, could I? <laughs> this is our distinguished guest, Miss Catherine Elizabeth Allen. Welcome to Sepulchre. Thank you. Well, just goes to show you never can judge a book by its cover. <laughs> That's what my granny should have said. Betty, meet Daniel Summer, friend of mine. Well, that ain't gonna help him get a room. I'm full up. Wait a minute. He tripped up Big Jim Gardner and showed him right on his face. Well, pleased to meet you, son. Fix him up with a room. Come here, Dan. Get to the bar. Say, this is real elegant. Huh? Finest in the territory. Bessie. Miss Baxter. Miss Allen. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. I'm going to leave Miss Allen in your hands for a while. Take good care of her, won't you? Oh, sure, sure. I suppose the author being a guest will have the guest room? Naturally, the best. The Cherokee, did you bring the lady's luggage? Everything here, boss. Oh. Max, number three. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hope you'll be comfortable. I'm sure I will be. Get all dressed up, kitten. Tonight, we're going to hit the high spots. Oh, the main event. That's right. Come along. Cherokee, get my bath ready. All right, boss. Come on, dearie. Whew. Gee, it's stale in here. I'll open the window and let some fresh air in. Ah, that's better. Well, huh? pretty classy, ain't it? I've never seen anything like it. You bet your life you ain't. I've done all the decorating myself. It's lovely, Mrs. Baxter. <laughs> oh, call me Bessie. I'll help you shake out your things. They get kind of messy in a bag. Ooh, ooh. My, but that's heavy. Oh, what you got in here? 
Some gold bricks? <laughs> Almost as valuable copies of my book. How'd you get started, dearie? I was bored, I guess. That'll do it. Every time. Just off the farm? School teacher. Come again? School teacher. That's what I thought you said. Better come along with me. Maybe you'd like to take a look at the uh, principal's office. I don't get it, honey. Neither did he until I slapped his face. You slapped Jim Gardner's face? I certainly did. And you're here? I certainly am. Come on, honey, and sit down. I've got to hear this from the beginning. Oh, the moon shines tonight on pretty red wing. The breeze is sighing. The night bird's crying. Oh. For afar neath this star, her love is sleeping, while Red Wing's weeping her heart away. Very pretty. Thanks. The stairs always liked it. You know, you made a big mistake today, cowboy. Yeah? How come? There isn't a man in this town that wouldn't give a right eye to be indebted to me. Well, maybe you can fix it up with somebody else to take a shot at you, and we can start all over again. <laughs> You're just lucky. Lucky Cherokee wasn't there, or both you and Wilkins would be dead by now. Not unless he can handle a gun better than he did that chug buggy of yours today. Maybe you'd like to find out, huh? Cherokee, come here. Scrub my back. Well, he does that too. Anyway, you did me a favor today. I'm gonna give you $100 to get out of town with. You sell your life pretty cheap, don't you? <laughs> All right, make it 200. Well, I'm kind of afraid to pick up money that easy. Might turn into one of them tycoons. <laughs> so, here I am. You told him all about yourself? Everything. And he still asked you to get off? Why, well, he begged me to. Either he's getting older or dumber, or you're the one. Of course, he thinks I missed my train, but uh, confidentially, I didn't. I wouldn't want him to think that I'd get off a train all by myself without a chaperone. Without what? A chaperone, someone like my Aunt Clara. Oh, now listen, honey. Your Aunt Clara couldn't even sit in on a game like this. This requires the services of a professional. Meet a new member of your family, Aunt Bessie. <laughs> oh, Bessie, you're wonderful. <laughs> Come on now, cards on the table. You're crazy about the big guy, ain't you? You know, I wrote about him even before I met him. He's exactly like Roger Hale in my book. He led her into a new world, filled with exciting adventure. And they got married and lived happy ever after? Well, of course. Well, you got the right idea, but I gotta warn you, kid. When you're shooting for orange blossoms with Jim Gardner, you're playing for high stakes. Well, that's what he told me to do. Hey, take them off. Close. Hey, you. Take them off. Close. You hear me? Just a minute. I'm looking at the flickers. Come on. I don't like my clothes on you. Don't you think they'll be coming? No, they're too big for you. You figured you owed me $200. I thought I was giving you a bargain. Are you going to take them off, or does Cherokee take over? You mean here? Now? You heard the boss? Well, I guess you'll have to excuse me, ladies. You want a job? Yep. You've got one. Cherokee, you're fired. I overestimated you. I didn't say I wanted his job. Well, do you? These duds go with it? Mm-hmm. Maybe it'd work out all right, so long as I don't have to watch your back. Start in by throwing him out. 
You heard the boss. Vamos. I'll be waiting for you here in the lobby, kitten. Eight o'clock, straight up. I'll be ready. Don't forget, we'll be waiting. After you, boss. Kitten, you're gorgeous. You take my breath away. You leave me a little breathless, too. That's good enough for me. Good evening, Mr. Gardner. Mr. and Mrs. Walden. Open and gates. Oh, bonsoir, Monsieur Gardner. Good evening, Pierre. We've been holding performance for you. Your table is directly center. Uh, not too near the orchestra, I hope. No, Monsieur. I know you will love it. Good evening, Mr. Gardner. Nice to see you. Thanks, Kelsey. Oh. Uh, there's one for you, boss. What are you doing here? Looking out for your interests. Were you invited? Well, if I'm going to be on the job, I ought to stay pretty close. Come on, get out. You mean you want me to go? Definitely. I can take a hint. Why the extra glasses? Uh, we had hoped you might honor us with your famous champagne trick this evening. Oh, no, no, not tonight. Oh, please do. All right, anything to make you happy. You see, the object is to fill four glasses at the same time without moving the bottle. Let it even be prettier with goldfish. Jealous? Uh-huh. Me too. Another world. And here's to its queen. We have two eyes, two lips, two arms. And we have love to burn. Which way shall All your might Oh, babe, won't you roll those eyes Eyes that I just idolize When they look at me, my heart begins to flow Then it starts a rocking like a motorboat Oh, oh, I never knew any boy like you Put your arms around me, honey Hold me tight, honey Paddle up and paddle up with all your might oh, 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 won't you roll your eyes? Big eyes that I just died a lot, I really do. When they look at me, my heart begins to flow. My honey, when it starts to rockin' like a motorboat. So funny, I know I could be true to only one. Only one? Maybe two. Maybe two? Maybe four and many more if they were all like you and you and you. Legs is pretty things, ain't they? <laughs> Al Dalton! Damn! Don't tell me the marshal hasn't caught up with you yet. No, you see, me and the progressive citizens made a deal. When the marshal's in town, they hoist a white flag and I stay out. And vice versa. <laughs>
been rumored that you're getting soft-hearted. Yeah, who started that? Well, you could do me a real charitable act. Yeah? You know Jim Gardner? Let loose of me, Dan. Gardner asked for this. Take it easy, Al. Let me loose. He's a double-crossing liar and a cheap crook. He is not cheap. You keep out of this, cowboy. I won't. Supposing he has a big mouth, fast-talking four-flusher. Nobody's gonna shoot him in the back while I'm around. Get him out of here, desperate. Did you hear what he said? He might have killed you, Jim. I don't understand it. I always played ball with the boys. I tried to warn you, Mr. Gardner, but you're too trusting. That fellow meant business, and he ain't the only one. I tell you, this is no soft job I walked into. Sit over here, will you? Oh, no, not me. My granny always says it was downright unpolite to shoot across the lady. favorite pick-me-up. How you feeling? Oh, like I was floating on a cloud. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Tell me all the exciting incidents. What did he say? I'm beautiful. Mm. He told me so. Well, where'd you go from there? Well, I'm different. He told me that, too. With gesture. Oh, I confuse him. Are you sure of that? He's never met anyone like me before. I'm sure of that. Uh, you're convincing me, baby. Where is he, Bessie? Oh, he's up on the reservation in a powwow. You better brush up on your sign language. How? <laughs> Howdy. Glad to know you. That's Richardson, his head driller. Daniel. Daniel Summer. Better call up. Pacheto. Oh, oh, yes. Big tree? This is Jim Gardner, big white chief of Sepulpe. He asked for power. Him like big wind. He speak? Grass, trees, rabbits, everything go. Big man. Powerful. Very sharp. Like knife. And that's a thousand dollar introduction. White chief speak. Big tree, your tribe owns much land. From the rock of the wide moon to the sleeping mountain. Mm. This land has only trees and rocks. Not good for grain. Buffalo gone now. Deer will soon go. Your sons will be poor. <laughs> Scare you? Oh. Mr. Mason, you have our offer right there in writing. That's right. We agreed to give the Indians 12 and a half percent of every dollar we get for the oil from their lands. That'll mean thousands of dollars a day. All they have to do is sign the agreement. What do you think? What do you think, little man with beard? Who, me? Oh, I ain't much on thinking. You better ask Daniel there. Daniel's the thinkingest man I ever knowed. What do you say, my son? I wish you hadn't asked me that. Speak up, Daniel. Well, I think you'd be suckers. Suckers? Suckers, what a squirrel is when he lets the woodpecker steal the nuts he stored up for the winter. Our friend has spoken. Wait a minute. What do you expect to get out of this? Not a raise in pay. My son, we will sign papers with you. Oh, no. I don't want the deal. I ain't the oil business. You bet you're not. Not even on the ragged edge. This doesn't settle a thing, Big Tree. I'm going to work the oil on this land even if I have to go to Washington. Come on. I'd better ride in the back. Beautiful. There are the 
the Indian lands. Oh, I heard about your losing them. I'm terribly sorry. Thanks, but I haven't lost them. Tomorrow I'll make Big Tree another offer, then I'll go direct to Washington. What I want, I get. I'll be on that train tomorrow night, won't I? That's right. I do hope my ticket's been validated correctly. Let me see. It would be awful if I were left behind again. Wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Why, Jim. You didn't really think I'd let you get away from me, did you? Well, I wasn't sure. Oh, I'm crazy about you. You know it. I wasn't going to use the ticket anyway. You don't need one on my train. I'm the conductor and the engineer, too. And every place you've ever dreamed of will go spinning past the window of our private car. Chicago, New York, London, Paris. I don't care whether we go to the moon or whether we stay right here, as long as we're always together. Always? Forever. You know, I have an idea you're going to be able to hold me for a long time. But wherever that place is along the line, that you get tired of the scenery, just let me know. Is that the only way we can travel? It's the way I travel. I promise you won't be the loser. I'm sure I won't be the loser. Because this is where I get off. Hey, wait a minute. Kitten, come back here. Oh, the moon shines tonight on pretty red way. The breeze is sighing, the night bird's crying. For a neath this star, her love is sleeping, while red wings weeping. What are you doing way out here? What does it look like? Oh, wandering around in the woods at night ain't exactly safe. You better get in. Thank you, but as I've told you before, I can take care of myself. Guess you're right at that. But you better keep an eye out for rattlers and coyotes and skunks. A lot of mountain lions around here, too. But then I guess you can take care of yourself. Come on, Brownie. Guys, uh, stubby. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Hey, Thank hold it, hold it. Wait a minute. I've changed my mind. I was hoping you would. We both look kind of lonesome the way we was. Yeah. Moon sure is pretty tonight. Don't you feel like talking? offered you the oil lease today, didn't they? Yep. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. That's what I thought. Too bad, too. Why? With those Indian lands, you could really amount to something, do something worthwhile. You think so? Well, don't you? Oh, I never thought much about it, one way or the other. It's about time you started thinking about it. Do you want to be just a cowboy all your life? Doing odd jobs, wearing other people's clothes? Don't you realize you could control everything? You could be big, important, bigger than anyone around here. Would you be satisfied if I just went back and punched Mr. Gardner in the nose? Get up. Hold it. 
team, Smokey. Must be an election going on. Dan, you could be like that. You mean full? No, of course not. I mean, you could make everyone look up to you. Can yeah, now, for near. Unless I'm sitting down. You've done it first. Done what? Come on, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, bro. You're gonna make us all rich. Thanks to you, cowboy. Plans in Oklahoma. Ah, oh, son, let me shake the hand that shooks a pulp. You're gonna save us, little fellas. Rich and five of Gardner's best men are with us. Oh, shut up, Wilkins. Let me talk. Keep We're gonna... still and let me tell him. We want you to take up the Indian lease. The whole town's backing you against Jim Gardner. Yeah, oh, hold on, I'm no oil man. Well, I am. I may not be anything else, but I am an oil man. Now you're talking, Rich. But I ain't even a businessman. Well, I am, son. You ain't got yeah, nothing you to can worry do about. I'm with you. But drilling oil wells takes money. That's what well, I'm trying to tell you, Daniel. We raise the money. Us little fellas. It'll be us and the engine instead of Gardner. What do you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't let us down, fella. The Indians gave you the lease. Well, we've got some rights. I'm not the man for this of deal. Of course you are. You're just a man. If you don't take up that oil lease, Jim Gardner will. He said he'd get the Indian lands, and he's going to Washington to do it. Well, if he can, we can. Sure, sure he's sure. right. I'll say you will. Oh, Dan, if you don't think anything of yourself, think of all these other people. Yeah, give us a chance. Yes. If you work those lands, you, you'll give us all a chance. Well, we can lick that Jim Gardner to a frazzle. We're back sure we can. Oh, oh, Seems like everybody around here's made up their mind but me. It ain't my money and it ain't my oil lands. I know how you folks feel and I'd like to please you. But still and all, I guess I gotta sleep on this proposition for a while. That's good enough for me. Drinks on the house for everybody. Come, Come on, on yeah, you so were Ain't you taking kind of a roundabout trip for the orange blossoms, honey? To the bar, boys! Oh, oh, uh, Dan, uh, come along. I want you to dance with me. Well, everything else has happened to me. I might as well go whole hog. Well, I'm not made of glass, you know. Huh? I won't break. Oh. I'm warning you. My feet ain't as light as my head. You're a wonderful dancer. Am I? Oh! Stay out of things you don't understand. Daniel, stand back. Give him air. Oh, Dan. Dan. Hey. What happened? Three guesses. Gardner. Give the gent a cigar. Well, I guess I've slept on that proposition long enough. How do you get to Washington? <laughs> For you yet? Nope. Still warm in the chair. Has Jim been in there? Been in and out more times than the Sunday shirt. Oh, fix your tie. Look pleasant. Why? We're gonna have my picture taken? The president will see you right away, Mr. Garner. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, at least we can say we saw somebody who saw the president. Gentlemen, I'm warning you. I'm prejudiced in favor of the Indians. If their land is going to be opened up, I am going to be positive that they get the best deal possible. I've studied both of these applications carefully. I'm ready to give my decision. I see you have the full support of the department, Mr. Gardner. I've met every requirement of financial backing and experience, Mr. President. Mm, that's more than I can do. Where is the other applicant? Why, Daniel Summers is only a penniless Oklahoma cowboy with nothing to recommend him. Summers? Dan Summers? Is he in Washington? He's right outside, but the department... Hang the department. Sergeant Dan Summers. Yes, sir. Come here, my boy. I'm delighted to see you. How are you? 
I'm still kicking, Mr. President. That's what I'm doing. Where did you disappear to after Cuba? I wound up in the Philippines, sir. The Philippines, huh? Come in, come in. Say, how did you manage to get to the top of San Juan Hill ahead of us? What about that? I had the longest legs, I guess. <laughs> the longest legs? My boys have a dog with long legs. They named him Sergeant Summers. I hope he's a good dog. <laughs> he is. Come in. The sergeant here was one of the toughest scrappers in my old regiment, gentlemen. Well, if that don't beat a carpet. I presume you know each other? Of course. Now, in making a decision, as I pointed out, my only interest is in the Indians. I see, Mr. Gardner, that you offer them 12.5% royalty, while the sergeant here offers them 50%. Unquestionably, a better deal. Not if the man who makes the offer lacks the money and the experience to develop the Indian lands, Mr. President. Quite so. 50% royalty is unheard of. It's, it's fantastic. Just how Mr. Summers expects to make good with no experience and a handful of grassroot farmers is something I can't answer. Perhaps he can. Would you like to try to answer that, Sergeant? Well, Mr. Gardner says is so about us being a small detachment of dirt farmers. But these are the men that came in with a land rush and stuck through the dust and the drought. Most of them ain't oil men, but they'll make a go of things, I figure, because this is their chance to take a chance, to have something for themselves. And about that 50%, I was raised around the Indians, and I've seen them pushed and squeezed enough as it is. And if my offering them half of what already belongs to them is fantastic, well, then that's what I am, whatever it is. I don't suppose you have any personal interest in this, Mr. Summers. Of course I have. I ain't doing this for nothing. I'm a 1% stockholder in this deal. Sergeant, how long do you think it will take you to sink a well if you keep pushing? Our head driller says about four months. Gentlemen, our country owes all of its progress to a small detachment of pioneers. Men who asked only for the chance to take a chance. That spirit is the essence of America. Sergeant, I'm going to give you your chance. Thank you, sir. You have four months to make good. Now, it is understood, Mr. Gardner, that you are to take over the deal. Providing that Mr. Summers fails to comply with the conditions of output and delivery. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. President. Good day, gentlemen. Well, congratulations on winning the first round. Come on, let's celebrate. Yes, let's do. Providing, however, that this grant to Daniel F. Summers and Company shall be null and void unless a producing well is completed within four months and unless Daniel F. Summers and Company deliver a minimum of 10,000 gallons of oil to the Oklahoma refinery at Tulsa, Oklahoma, on or before August 31st. Short, sweet, and final. And airtight. And how's the cowboy getting along? He's doing all right. You think that one-horse outfit can deliver 10,000 gallons of oil before September 1st? I could. Well, that's different. <laughs> Start unloading that lumber. We're gonna spud in right here. Where? Three steps off that rock Desperate's sitting on. What are you, a marker? One, two, three. Right here. No, here. We'll split the difference. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I've been over every inch of this reservation with my nose scraping the ground like a hound dog. Well, here's hoping. You looking for somebody, Cherokee? Look for you. One job. Sorry, we're fresh out of bodyguarding jobs around here. Try your old boss. There's an opening there. His side, not my side. You work for India. I work for you. You're really serious about that work? Sure. Be strong. Well, let's see how strong you are unloading them wagons. Then we'll talk. Sure, boss. Whoa! We've been waiting for you to drive the stake. <laughs> 
Come on, honey, and give it everything you've got. Well, this is really an occasion. <laughs> Whoop, I guess you'll need a little help. No, I can do it. I want to. Hold it. Let's christen this well right. That was my last drink. Till the well's in and the oil's delivered. Nice going, Rich. Now. Better take your hand away. I got confidence in you. the richer it looks, huh? That's the way it is with most things, Wilkins. You gotta dig deep to get anything worthwhile. We'd be a lot better off if we had a new bit. Murder the time we lose taking this one out to dress it, then twiddling her thumbs while she cools off. Why don't we buy another one? On account of the Oklahoma Tool and Supply Company is owned by Jim Gardner. Honey, where you been all this time? Well, can't we get one from Kansas City? Sure, get delivery in about two months. We got a date in Tulsa in two weeks. The boys will make out all right if we just let them get back on their job. Come on. Well, goodbye, Dan. Well, uh, here, uh, I, uh, got something for you. Oil sands, huh? No, it's a bottle full of rainbows. What does it mean, Dan? Well, you never see a rainbow unless the storm's over and fair weather's ahead. And if you follow a rainbow, you sometimes find a pot of gold. Oh, a bottle full of rainbows. Say, boy, that would go straight to my head. Well, so long, Dan. Goodbye. Now then, all together, fellas. Somebody Your granny always tells you a stitch in time saves nine. Oh, the way she always puts it, we... Oh, never mind, your granny. Give me that. New moon. Did you make a wish? No. But if I had, it'd be to see you sitting there sewing, just like that. I made a wish for both of us. Do you mind? Any way you want it, that's the way I want it. You never talk much, do you? Well, maybe that's because my granny always says that second fiddler's got to wait his turn before he can sing out good and loud. Dan, if you had made a wish, what would it have been? You know the bend in the river where the cottonwoods grow? Mm hmm I'd build me a house right there. Well, I didn't know you ever thought of such things. Oh, I've been thinking about that ever since I was a little tyke. I even thought of it over in the Philippines. 
I could see it just as plain. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Nice horse in the corral. I could even see a girl with sorrel hair standing in the doorway. But of course, now that I'm putting near a dashing tycoon almost, things will be different. The house will be bigger. Be extra rooms for the kids. Big open fireplace. There'll be a fancy stable instead of that old pole corral. Is that all you want? Well, what else is it? Oh, Dan. If I were going to be a dashing tycoon, I'd be dashing. I'd have automobiles and private railroad cars. Why, I'd have a whole train. And if I found someone I wanted, I'd sweep her right off her feet. I'd take her with me to the end of the line. All the way. You would? I certainly would. I'd be bold and daring. I... You know, I'm gonna like this dashing tycoon business. Uh, I better be going. Oh. It looks good, don't it, Rich? Use your nose. Smell it. It's oil, sure. It's gas fumes you smell now. Next comes the oil. A gusher, or I miss my guess. What's it like when a really big gusher blows in? I've seen them roar in and tear the whole derrick up at the roots. How soon? Any time now. Hey, did you hear that? Any time. Oil! Try it off. Come and get it! Come on, boys, come on, wash up. Make the most of it. This is our last hot meal. And no more smoking. Can't afford to take a chance with all that gas rolling in. If I had a bank like Pierpont Morgan, and Miss Annie Held would hold me and sing if I ambled to the altar with Hetty Green. Oh. Then I'd be satisfied all right. If oh, I... Oh, quick, will you? Stop there, fool and devil. Oh, I was only drying your beard, you old Rocky Mountain Canary. Uh, Come on, grub's waiting. Thanks. You put me first in the line. Mm, that smells good. Nice. Pass it on. Oh, no thanks. I ain't got no appetite. Like a little kid waiting for Santa Claus. Well, ain't we all? Backboard, desperate. Watch his back. <coughs> Stay here. Check up on things. I'll say I'm gonna check up. See you at the hotel. Just sent a wire to Mrs. Wilkins. Still in there. Well, nothing left out there but a hole in the ground. We washed up. Unless we can get a hold of a portable rig. You'd better go in now. How is he, Doctor?
Yeah, you will. She blew in a gusher, didn't she? Yeah. Sure. Then we're all rich, ain't we? You can take her easy now, partner. Emma used to joke and say that out of our first barrel of oil, I was to buy her a sewing machine. You think that you could see that she gets it, Dan? Sure. It's the first thing I'm gonna do. Then I got nothing to worry about, am I? Nothing to worry about. I got a sewing machine downstairs, Dad. Thanks. This one's got to be brand new. Now. Now I remember. Cherokee was fooling around the boiler when we was washing up. There was no accident out there. It was dynamited. All this time, we've been playing right into Jim Gardner's hands. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Dan. You may be wrong. Don't go over there. Somebody will be killed. Somebody has been killed. But it won't help matters if somebody Let else... me handle this. But, Dan, it may be you. Aren't you going to stop him? No, ma'am. Well, gone. Everything blow up. I use dynamite. Smart, eh? You thought I'd be pleased? Sure. Well, I'm not. Why did you do it? I know like cowboy. You know like cowboy. Now I get him job back, eh? Oh, you stupid. I'm not seeing Mr. Gordon. I'm sorry, mister. He's dead. I'm going in here. Jim, Dan's on his way here. Someone blew up our well. He thinks you did. For your information, I had nothing to do with it. Don't you understand? Someone will be killed. Thanks for the warning. You don't want it to be me. Oh, I don't want it to be anyone. You've licked us. Isn't that enough, Jim? Stop things before they get any worse. You know, kitten, you've changed. You're more attractive than ever. Get out of the way. Dan, I asked him. He had nothing to do with dynamiting the well. Stop and think, cowboy. If I had anything to do with it, you'd have been blown up with a well. I'm not sure about you yet. But I am sure about the Cherokee kid. And I saw him come up here. Wilkins was killed, and that's going to be paid for if I have to tear you and the whole town apart. Beginning with your pet rattlesnake. <laughs> Now all I want from you is that portable oil rig. Why don't you come out and get it? I'm going to. I'll tell the sheriff why I killed him. What are you going to tell him? Self-defense. The same thing I'm going to tell him about you if I find you on my property. Dan, I want to talk to you. You picked your side of the fence. Stay there. Forty-three hundred and seventy-five. Say, get the hold of this portable rig by starting that prairie fire was a great idea, Dan. Maybe. But the well ain't in yet. Keep working. Forty-three hundred and seventy-eight. 
4,379, 4,300. Stop counting. We've been drilling through that oil sand for the last six hours. Oh, why don't she cough it up? 4,384, 40... Coyote, 4,386. 4,387. Well, we're all set to cap her when she comes in. Yeah. When? Cup coffee? Well, they beat the oil in. Stick to your jobs. Keep working as long as you can. Hello, Gardner. Nice weather we're having. I don't suppose you heard about the prairie fire over by my field last night. No fooling. You put it out? Mm-hmm. Funny thing, when we got back, my portable rig was missing. You don't say. All right, men. Take down my rig. I thought you'd be expecting me. I was, kind of. You didn't think I'd be coming here alone. No, not exactly. Energy ball! Watch it, men. Keep your eyes open. Ajayu, Akse. Atoiba, Ateko. Ajayu, Akse! What do you tell him? He says this fight belongs to you and him. Personal. Hold it, men, unless they start something. Well, I guess that puts a weight on our side. Cowboy? I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Well, don't let me disappoint you. Mr. Gardner, and we'll pay you for the wear and tear on it. Yeah? When? Right after delivery tomorrow. Tulsa's a long way from here. How are you going to get 10,000 gallons of that stuff to the refinery before it closes? Through the pipeline. <laughs> It'll be a neat trick if you can do it. I just bought the pipeline. Thanks for the gusher. You can have the rig. Come on, men. <laughs> Say the word down, and I'll mow him down. I'll burn the well for I see it handed to him on a silver platter. You 
got to dig up everything on wheels that'll carry oil. No, we ain't got a chance. There ain't a half a dozen of them old tankers around here fit to use. No, but there's lumber and there's tar and there's tonight. There is a chance. Rich, you bring in those tankers. I'll fill it. <laughs> well, you'll be filling before morning. How much does she hold, Mel? That's about 500 gallons. That does it, Dan. Drive on down to the main road and wait with the rest of them. Hey. Come on, get a move on. We're running oil now, molasses. You heard what he said, get busy. Hey, that cow poke can get real cantankerous, can he? And so can Jim Gardner. Come on, we gotta look busy anyhow. You know, I can never remember which way your left thread turns. Oh, right, that's right. <laughs> Eat. What a pleasure. Help me, Dad. Uh -huh. Just like my granny always says, the way to a man's heart through his stomach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get it! Job. You can eat later when time don't mean anything. They can't keep on working without food. They're dead tired, and so are you. Is everything ready, Bessie? I'll pour the coffee. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to help. Ain't you a little mixed up? Not at all. I thought you'd picked your pasture. I didn't pick anything. You did that for me. You just took it for granted. Don't tell me you were just passing the time of day with Mr. Gardner. Daniel, someday I'm going to be forced to whip you. Come and get it! When we get started, line out single file and keep them close together. Well, we're all here. Let them roll. Hoppa! The Rockefeller was my valet, and I had my little served by the king. Come up this canyon like it was a smokestack. What'll we do? We're going through. Fast. Get back in line! You can go through if you want, Summers, but I'm going back. Rich, get up there and take over those lines. Get away from here. You heard what he said. Move over. Let him roll! If you don't like it, get out! Hey!
make of it, Del. Looks like somebody got the idea of fighting fire with fire. Get up on another wagon. They'll make it. Dan will bring him through. Yeah. Well, I better get that coffee back on the fire. When we get to the relay station, we'll have to do a little more work. Yeah. Keep rolling, fellas. Rub them fresh horses ahead! If you really want to help, stay out of the way. Hurry up with them horses. We ain't got all day. Hey, you jughead. You been riding upside down? Huh? If you'd ever talk to me the way you talk to her, you'd be unwrapping yourself from around a coffee pot right now. Some people have learned to keep their mouth shut. That's what we promised her. We do, and that's what's caused the trouble. What? <laughs> you thought that she went over there to warn Gardner, didn't you? Well, she didn't. It was you that she was thinking about. She'd even try to get us to stop you. But we was too crazy mad to think about anything but trying to get even. And all she was thinking about was trying to keep you out of trouble. This is all the thanks she gets for it. Why, oh, you luppy mule. Get over there now and straighten yourself out. seem to be doing so good by myself. I wonder, could I get you to help me? Aren't you a little mixed up? Yes, ma'am. I'm plenty mixed up. trying to say to you. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the bend in the river where the cottonwoods grow. You remember that? Of course I remember. I remember the, the house and the pole corral. No, that was going to be a fancy stable. Oh. Damn. I've been checking with the men. They say we haven't a chance to make Tulsa before 6 o'clock. Oh, well, we're sure gonna try. Sure we'll try. But if I know Jim Gardner, he'll be helping Witherspoon close those gates right on the minute. Witherspoon? Charlie Witherspoon? That's right. Is he the one who's gonna close them gates? Yeah. Over my dead body. And it ain't dead yet. 
Come on, sister. We've got loads of work to do. See you in Tulsa, Dad. Come on, let's get rolling. Don't you think we ought to wait till they hitch the horses to the wagons? Oh. Got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Miller, they turned back? No, sir. They came right on through the fire. Smashed up a few wagons, that's all. Stupid cowboy. Doesn't know when he's late. What do we do now? Relax. Everything is being done. I want those orders straightened out. I guess that'll settle it. Hello, Charlie. Why, hello, Mr. Gardner. Come in, come in. Well, it looks like your luck is still holding. I guess you work the Indian lands. Get your hat. It's all over but the celebrating. Let's have dinner together. No, I can't leave till closing time tonight. My signature goes to Washington on those contracts, too, you know. Oh, mere technicality. Get your hat. No, I'd like to, Mr. Gardner, but I've got to stay here till six. You can have a drink with me, though, can't you? Well, I don't mind if I do. There's nothing against that in the contracts. Awesome, man. Let him roll! Come on, let's get going. I'm sorry, Mr. Gardner. Not till six o'clock. That's right, Charlie. Stick to your principles. You know, I have plans. They might include you. Yeah? Things ought to be happening pretty soon now. This is like shooting fish in a rain barrel. Come on, let's lock up and paint the town. Gardner must be inside. All right, kid, you keep him occupied. While I make Witherspoon forget the time of day. Come along with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. Down the road of life we'll fly on the boat. Hello, Charlie. Bessie. Charlie, how are you? I'm awfully glad to see you. Why, Jim Gardner, imagine finding you here. Quite a coincidence. Hiya, Jim. I don't like to interrupt this little reunion, but Charlie, it's after six. That's right. You ladies wait here while I close up. I'll be right back, and we'll all celebrate. Fine. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, Charlie. You told me that 15 years ago. This time, I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying right with you. Kitten, I'm glad you're here. We, we've lots to talk about, haven't we? we certainly have.
look and get busy. Congratulate me. Before the fight's over? Isn't that bad luck? The fight is over. The cowboy was licked before he started. We both know that. I'm talking about us. Us? We've wasted a lot of time, Kim. Let's get back on the train. This time we'll go straight to the end of the line with no stopovers. Except for a honeymoon at Niagara Falls. What do you say? I got off that train a long time ago, Jim. I'm trying to catch a ride on a cowboy's wagon. And here he comes. Tommy, what happened to your boss? I believe the lady took him for a buggy ride, Mr. Gardner. With gallons to spare. Well, cowboy, you made it. That's because you don't know when you're licked. You can't bring that oil in with those hay burners every day. But I've got a pipeline. Then I've got a proposition to take up with you in my office. When I get one. Why not in here? Never let pleasure interfere with business. Sure. Excuse us. Where's Daniel? Well, he's in conference with Jim Gardner. What happened? Gardner sleeping on that proposition I made him. Oh, what'd you do that for? Now that we got money, I want to buy back that $1,000 introduction. Here you are, Rich. You kept your word. Well, come on. We ain't on the wagons now. Dan, you're going to be a real tycoon. And you can build... We can build. That house by the river. And let's have your granny come and live with us. Who? Your granny. Oh, uh... There's just one catch to that. What? Well, I never had a granny. That is, at least wise that I can remember. You see, she was only a, a, a poetic license. You faker. You fraud. You darling. <laughs> 